This video looks at developing a process FMEA using the seven step approach of the AIG VDA FMEA handbook, first edition. Today we're focusing on step three, function analysis. So to recap on what we covered in step one and step two, there's a lot of focus in the new FMEA handbook about FMEA efficiency. So this is looking at the investment that management have to commit to in developing the FMEA and implementing any prevention or detection controls, which might mean, for example, investing in error-proofing devices versus the potential benefits that we can gain. So if we do FMEA correctly, we should get reduced customer complaints, reduced warranty concerns, and reduction in the cost of poor quality. A quick recap on the seven step approach. Remember it's broken down into three distinct phases. System analysis, which includes step one, two, and three. Failure analysis and risk mitigation, which is four, five, and six. And risk communication, which is step seven. Today we're focusing on function analysis. Throughout this series on process FMEA, we're working within the framework of this same case study. So just a reminder, we're developing a new product for General Motors. It's an injection molded component with pins. It's going to be used to provide an electrical connection with a mated part. Very similar to other products that we've made using injection molding, but this time we're going to be using a robot to place the pins into the tool. Those pins have to withstand a particular pull-out force and also it's different from previous products we've manufactured where there are some very tight tolerances in terms of critical dimensions. So as a reminder, what do we do in step two, structure analysis? What we looked at there is a particular process step that we wanted to focus on and we looked at what are we trying to produce as the finished component? What process step are we focusing on? And what is the potential 4M influence on that process step? That gave us the background now to go into this step three. So step three, function analysis. The purpose of this function analysis is to ensure that the intended functions and requirements of the product and the process are appropriately allocated. So what do they mean by function? A function describes what the process item or process step is intended to do. There may be more than one function for each process step. When we describe the function, we should describe it in the present tense using a verb. And what do they mean by requirement? This can sometimes be called a characteristic. These are a distinguishing feature for a product. For a process FMEA, requirements could be from the product or they could be process characteristics. So let's look at completing the format for the FMEA for this third step function analysis. Again, similar to step two, we have three boxes to complete. The first box is the function of the process item. So this is the process item, the component in this case, that we're producing for General Motors. What is it intended to do? So within our plant, what we want to produce is a finished injection molded component that we're going to ship to the customer to meet the customer drawing requirements. What does the customer want to do? They want to take our finished injected molded component and connect it with the relevant mating part. What about the end user? In this particular case, maybe the organization doesn't know what application the product is going to be used in that could affect the end user requirements. In some cases, an organization may know that. The second box we have to complete in the third step is the function of the process step and the product characteristics. So in this case, we were focusing on the injection molding 
process step, operation 60. So what are we actually trying to do there? We're trying to insert the correct number and the correct type of pins into the injection molded component that are going to withstand a pullout force of a thousand newton meters from the injection molded component. We also saw in the case study that there is a critical dimension. There is a specific component length that is referenced. So these are just some examples. What we're thinking about when we fill out this format in this particular process step what are the functional requirements that we are trying to achieve? This will tend to focus more on the product characteristics that could come from the customer drawing. In the third part of the form we have to fill out here for the third step is understanding the function of the process work element or the relevant process characteristic. So remember earlier we looked at using 4M analysis to look at the sequence of operations that could be called work elements within this particular process step injection molding. So what we're looking at here, for example, is we locate the pins into the tool by the robot. The tool closes, we inject the uh, injection molded material into the tool under pressure. So for example here, 1400 PSI would be the pressure. We mold the part, the tool opens and the part is ejected by the plunger. The operator takes the part and does visual inspection of the component and they place it into interim packaging. So when we look at this part, the function of the process work elements, we can bring in any relevant process characteristics that we understand at this stage of the process FMEA development. So let's summarize step three, function analysis. So the team has now had a detailed discussion on the function of the overall saleable product, about the function of the process step, but then have broken down to the functions of the individual work elements within the process step. You start to see that within step two and three, we're going into far more detail than maybe we would have done using the AAG 4th edition manual or any other reference manual. And I think this is where one of the fundamental differences are within this new seven step approach. That we need to do a lot more upfront planning about what we're trying to achieve before we go into any of the detailed risk analysis.